child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping. Welcome, my friends, to On the Go Devo, Alito United Methodist Church's message in a moment for busy disciples. I'm grateful for these few moments with you today because I know the holidays are busy days and it's not always possible to be together. But through this video, we can stay connected even when life gets in the way. We're in the midst of our Advent series called Waiting for Him. And on this second Sunday of Advent, we are continuing to look toward Christmas through the lens of some of our most beloved Christmas carols. What Child Is This didn't start out as a Christmas carol. The melody is a famous old British tune from 1850 called Greensleeves, originally a ballad about a man pining for his lost love, the Fair Lady Greensleeves. Although God is mentioned in a closing verse of the original lyrics, nothing in the song even closely resembles a religious piece. It was simply one of the era's most popular folk songs. <clears throat> then in 1865, <clears throat> sorry, let me start over. <clears throat> Welcome, my friends, to On the Go Devo, Alito United. Bleh. One take trig, everybody. One take trig, right down the <laughs> toilet today. <laughs> Going for a dozen. <laughs> Welcome, my friends, to On The Go Devo, Alito United Methodist Church's message in a moment for busy disciples. I'm grateful for these few moments with you today because I know the holidays are busy days and it's not always possible to be together. But through this video, we stay connected even when life gets in the way. We're in the midst of our Advent series called Waiting For Him. And on this second Sunday of Advent, we are continuing to look toward Christmas through the lens of some of our most beloved Christmas carols. What Child Is This didn't start out as a Christmas carol. The melody is actually a famous old British tune from around 1850 called Greensleeves, originally a ballad about a man pining for his lost love, the Fair Lady Greensleeves. Although God is mentioned in the closing verse of the original lyrics, nothing in the song even closely resembles a religious piece. It was simply one of the era's most popular folk songs. Then in 1865, an Englishman named William Chatterton Dix, an insurance salesman who was bedridden with a serious debilitating illness, wrote a poem titled The Manger Throne, three verses of which became this familiar song, What Child Is This? The song's powerful words presents a unique view of the birth of Christ. While the baby is the focal point of the song, the viewpoint of the writer seems to be that of an almost confused observer. Dix imagined visitors to the humble manger wondering who the child was that lay before them. The song weaves a story of a child's birth, life, death, and resurrection, but in each verse it is answered with a triumphant declaration of the infant's divine nature. The third verse, though, harkens us back to the scene of the Magi visiting the Christ child bearing their gifts and paying homage to the new king. You know, we feel like we know a lot about these wise men from the East. After all, they grace practically every nativity scene that you run across. But really, we don't know very much. We know about the gifts and the endless ink that has been spilled explaining the significance of each one. But perhaps the key to understanding the wise men's place in the Christmas story lies not in what they brought, but in the fact that they came in the first place. Exactly where they came from is unknown, but Arabia, Persia, and Babylon are the three likeliest possibilities. In any case, they no doubt traveled for many weeks, covering hundreds of miles before finally arriving in Jerusalem, looking for the king of the Jews. They were ultimately directed to Bethlehem by King Herod, who thought he had found a willing conspirator in his quest to find and destroy the long-awaited ruler that would shepherd my people Israel. It's a familiar story a comfortable story, and one that is a wonderful, wonderful part of our Christmas tradition. And so it's easy to overlook a couple of crucial facts. One is that the wise men came looking for the king of the Jews, despite the fact that they weren't Jewish. And second, that they followed a star placed in the sky by a god that they did not worship. And yet they came. All of which serves as a reminder that God burst into the world not for Christians, but for all people that the Apostle Paul's insistence that there was no longer Jew nor Greek was born not in the early church, but in a stable outside of Bethlehem. That these men, like generations who would follow, devoted their lives to seeking the truth, only to find it in the face of a child. 
And maybe that's the real message for us on this second Sunday of Advent. Maybe the key to the whole story is the simple fact that it would be decades before the first Jew recognized his king, and centuries later, many still have not. And yet these wise men from the East, who had no idea what they were looking for, went looking nonetheless, and they ended their journey looking into the face of God. The word epiphany means to show or to make known, and it's a term that we have come to associate with the wise men. But what God revealed to them had little to do with their wisdom. Instead, it had everything to do with their willingness to look for it, and more importantly, to recognize that which was holy when they saw it. And so today, I want to encourage you to listen to the song again. Imagine yourself with all the 21st century distractions and demands looking into the eyes of that child. Do you see him? Do you see the face of God? And more important, are you seeking him this Advent season? But first, let me invite you to pray with me. Gracious and loving God, open our eyes that we truly might see you, that we might see you in the, in the faces of everyone we meet. And more importantly, oh God, we pray that, that you would rest easy on our souls, that others might see you in our face as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so very much for joining me today. And God bless you all. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Hey.